While we are talking about uh, headless and uh, WordPress, uh, uh, I just uh, recalled yesterday that there is a one really cool site which is uh, uh, headless and uh, not WordPress. I think they are calling calling it a single page uh, application or something like that. It has a Magento as a backend and. Uh, uh, node applica uh, JavaScript application at the front end, and I uh, especially like that uh, the speed of the thing is in a way that uh, really I can uh, browse around and set uh, different uh, expe expectations, and uh, the, all of the swappings of the images and everything is uh, working like uh, that. And I'd be really interested to know what they are going to tell me, if they are going to tell about uh, what their customers are thinking. I was very skeptical when I was re seeing this uh, project the first time. I thought, oh, some guys are doing so something again with uh, uh, these uh, nerdy, nerdy and very cool uh, front-end things, and why you can't just serve HTML? And when I now looked at the result and I said that, oh, guy, Peter, you are growing old, you probably should look more at the, uh, what the young guys are doing. So, uh, knowing that uh, Reich will be showing his doings, my, interest, my main question was that uh, how can I become Reich? Or how can I, uh, uh, in the easiest way, uh, try to create something that is using Halo's uh, uh, WordPress? and uh, learn from that without uh, spending uh, that much uh, time as uh, Velvet has. So, of course, I went to uh, my friend Google, and I googled something like headless uh, uh, WordPress uh, sample, or maybe it was uh, 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 boilerplate or something like that, and voila, there is something which is on the uh, GitHubs. And things on the GitHubs are always cool, but uh, you must be careful before down downloading uh, things from the internet. So I thought that this, what, what the hell is Postlight? So I uh, went to the Postlight website and I said, hmm, okay, some kind of production company. And then I scrolled down and found that, ah, Paul Ford, okay. Uh, I, this is, I think, the, uh, one of uh, the. Uh, written works I uh, first uh, uh, read uh, from him was, I think, the history of programming or something like that, which was a really cool, well-studied story. So if you are, uh, I can uh, later uh, share a link also to this story. So, ah, and I'm following him in Twitter for a couple of years. Okay, that must be okay. So if I'm v following somebody in Twitter, then it definitely must be okay. And it turns out that uh, they are with their uh, starter kit uh, to version 2.0, which means that it's probably a rather major product to uh, try. And uh, when you're interested in uh, uh, thinking about is there any business case in going uh, uh, the headless way, then uh, do read their blog post. I think they summarize the things uh, uh, pretty well. Uh, from a technical point, there remained the question that uh, what is the technical meaning of uh, doing it in uh, in a headless way? Is it making something like a word better place to live? And uh, after looking at how actually the uh, Osco webshop was uh, working, I understood, and having uh, spent uh, about a month ago some time uh, learning uh, Node.js and doing uh, some projects there, I understood that, ha, ah, we're living in the world of PHP, which means that basically every page load means booting up of all of the stack of uh, application on your server side unless it's running from cache, but anyway, everything is booted up. Thankfully, there is op cache, so the PHP files are somewhat parsed uh, before, but anyway, it is basically completely, for just showing me simple data, it just uh, runs huge amounts of codes. How can that be even sustainable? And then I was starting to think that uh, 
Uh, but uh, let's look from the other side. What's happening with all of these page views on my browser side? For browser, it's easy, like exactly like a server. Bro both of these are complete, whatever goldfish brains. So they uh, produce a page or they render a page, and that's all. Now you click something, and the browser is like a happy pup puppy going to fetch another page and start saying, oh, do I need some new JavaScript? Do I need some new CSS, some new files? OK, and building it up again. And that's actually from the purely computing viewpoint, completely pointless attitude, that you are just booting up the application every time you want to do. Could you imagine that uh, you are using Word and Excel in a way that you want to add one number to your Excel, and for that you are first closing down the Excel and putting it up? possibly also putting up the uh, windows. That kind of seems ridiculous. And when I co came to this conclusion, uh, this point, I understood that, okay, there is a point in that. Especially after uh, 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 Anets from uh, East Bavalet had asked me earlier about uh, what is the impact of cat pictures on our environment. And again, I actually thought that okay, this is this is uh, this uh, some kind of stupid uh, uh, BuzzFeed kind of a clickbait uh, question, cat, cat pictures and so on. And I uh, did go to the internet, and I found there is actually a huge amount of research on the exact in, uh, energy demands of uh, everything we are doing online and uh, it is possible to scientifically calculate the amount of uh, uh, energy cat pictures take. So what I am going to show you uh, is not only a cool thing to do but it might be also the right thing to do. So if you are thinking about uh, striking for uh, environment then uh, maybe you could just use your Fridays, not sitting in front of Parliament, but just uh, go to better React apps to uh, consume less energy. Uh, and for that, uh, the main part of my uh, talk is actually showing these things in uh, Glorio's uh, live view. So, how can you boot up your first uh, uh, headless WordPress in like uh, five to ten minutes? I'm not going to do it live. I tested it live and I found that it was a bit too long for live. Ten minutes waiting for Docker to download everything and boot up. Okay, not interesting. So, what I have here is a regular Docker uh, desktop uh, application. And uh, what I did on command line was uh, the usual uh, git clone and uh, set repository and here I have been uh, running uh, basically this one command. I think I can make the text a bit larger. Uh, so basically uh, docker compose up and uh, the result should be mostly looking like done, 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 done. Uh, something that your code doesn't seem to do for me uh, from the first run, which I thought it, it does, is uh, there is also a command to install uh, WordPress from scratch and uh, import all required components. So in my experience, this one needs to be run after the getting things up, uh, not just to reinstall, but just to uh, import the required uh, contents. And now that I do have this uh, four Docker containers up, it's actually uh, four containers. There is a uh, database container, there is a WordPress container, which is running on port 8080, and there are two, two headless frontends. There is one running at port 3000, which is using uh, WordPress REST API, and there's another one which is using uh, GraphQL. The one which is using uh, uh, REST API also has uh, server-side rendering, and the GraphQL one does uh, not. I don't know why, why, why they have decided to not add, but uh, uh, for me it's a very interesting way to actually see two versions of apps and have a possibility to uh, see how uh, they perform. So, uh, uh, here is the one. 
and uh, I hope it uh, does load again. Yes, uh, now that, that's the fresh load uh, from port 3000. So this is the uh, REST API version of the web. Uh, so what it does, it, it is a WordPress website, so it has some uh, menu with uh, some uh, uh, sample category from, from, from uh, blog. Uh, some of the menu items are like WordPress menus can be taking you to the outside websites, in this case uh, Postlight's uh, uh, homepage. And uh, here are also some other views of the uh, pages, including including uh, nice uh, featured images and everything everything fetched from from WordPress as you would uh, probably expect it to work. The only thing is, if you are going to experiment that and would like to change the uh, featured image, then you need to actually modify their WordPress theme because they have, uh, for some reason, forgotten to include the theme supports featured images, uh, uh, what it's filter or something like that, to to tell that uh, uh, it can be used. Uh, so. Uh, it will be looking like uh, that. So it is a server-side uh, rendered uh, uh, page with uh, a nicely everything packed into the same page, like uh, I'm too often seeing a lot of uh, uh, React apps do that. Uh, I, I like to see well-formed HTML uh, when I'm looking into the source code, but uh, with these uh, newer things, I'm seeing all kinds of stra strange things, then uh, okay, that's probably the life. And uh, when I'm looking on the other one, then I'm seeing exactly uh, what Greg told. So this is basically just the warning that uh, you do need to have JavaScript running to uh, see the page. Uh, uh, what's uh, interesting here for me is that uh, how it actually works and uh, run, running them uh, side, side by side makes it uh, easy for me to have also the uh, inspector open and uh, I can for example in the settings here uh, disable JavaScript. So uh, now the website is still working here. So. Uh, it is nicely coming from the server side. There is nothing running on on, uh, on uh, my browser. When I uh, take uh, this one and try to do the, I think I need to do it uh, uh, separately for also this developer tool window. So here, in this case, I will be seeing uh, uh, only this warning that it uh, uh, won't be running. So, uh, exactly as uh, expected. Uh, next interesting thing for me was that, uh, hmm, okay, how it is working uh, if I do have the JavaScript uh, uh, enabled. So, let's uh, close that one and I'll open the network uh, view. So currently the JavaScripts are red because they are disabled, so they are not uh, uh, loaded uh, also. Maybe if I put it down here, maybe we'll be seeing better, uh, better results a bit. So let's load the page. It loads. And uh, I'm seeing that it, ha it has loaded uh, one doc, which is the main home page. Now, what, what happens if I uh, click on another post? Uh, there is no more uh, HTML traffic, so uh, for my complete surprise, it actually does work in a way that the first page is coming and possibly also rendered uh, using the server-side provided uh, version, and uh, then the application is going to actually, uh, for the follow-up movements around the page, fetch different components via uh, API from the server, which presumably also means that uh, it uh, can uh, work pretty fast. So as you saw that uh, most of the CSS is uh, inside the HTML. So actually this page should be working uh, down fast also 
uh, when, uh, when, when measuring the first page load uh, speeds. We'll get to actually testing that in a moment. So, uh, it runs as expected. Uh, what else is on the back end? Here is the, on the port 8080, is a uh, WordPress, which is uh, <laughs> uh, mostly redirecting everything to the JSON output because there are no page templates in this uh, particular setup. Uh, it has only the uh, API output. Uh, it does have, of course, uh, VP admin, uh, where you can uh, it comes with a very secure setup of having postlight and postlight as username and uh, password so please uh, <laughs> when you are trying to put that live do not uh, forget to replace the password because this uh, might be a common pattern uh, if uh, you detect uh, traces of this website to take down uh, whatever su subdomain you have currently installed that. So how it looks like, it's completely regular WordPress with uh, some posts, with the, some uh, uh, media files uh, which already we saw, and uh, some pages with uh, content and uh, content with featured uh, mm, uh, featured images and uh, so on. Uh, under uh, uh, themes, we have a uh, uh, single theme, which is uh, Postlight uh, Headers WordPress uh, theme, which is uh, mostly containing uh, the components needed for producing uh, the output. Oh, I can uh, actually also, uh -huh, I managed to reboot my computer and close my uh, code editor, but uh, we'll be here in a second. So the pro project itself, uh, or uh, herself, uh, looks like that. So there is a uh, WordPress, there is uh, the theme, there is the single uh, post-like uh, headless uh, theme, which has uh, some kind of uh, like uh, menu integrations and uh, things like uh, uh, these integrations with uh, advanced custom fields uh, and uh, so on. Uh, we also have some uh, plugins. Uh, this uh, starter kit is uh, coming nicely with uh, everything required for, uh, among other things, providing uh, uh, ACF uh, REST uh, API and uh, and other things it also comes with uh, pre-installed with uh, vp migrate db pro you only need to supply your own uh, license code so you can very easily import your existing website to this framework so currently i'm running with uh, uh, their provided content but i code completely trash their content and import here whatever i have from my live sites and see how it actually would be instantly running uh, using uh, headless uh, WordPress. Uh, also, uh, okay, there's the common WordPress importer for Im importing WordPress uh, X XML and uh, things I didn't have time because I got it running and so happy it's running uh, yesterday uh, evening. There is also a Java Web Token integration for logins and things like that. So, so uh, there seem to be uh, things also for uh, tasks that actually need you to have uh, login on the uh, on the front end, like maybe something related to a web shop or commenting or whatever uh, user-related uh, tasks. Uh, what else there is? There is, uh, of course, the Docker. Uh, uh, set up uh, configurations which are uh, I think a very good place to actually start learning Docker if you haven't uh, done that yet and then there are two front ends uh, uh, both are basically uh, in a way that uh, you can run their also they, uh, them I think also outside your uh, Docker container basically you can go and tell there that uh, uh, yarn and and 
yarn start, I think, was the command which the Docker is uh, starting them. So uh, very, uh, very, uh, uh, very easily uh, runnable uh, applications. So uh, my more interesting question was that uh, because all of the documentation tells that uh, it can't be running on uh, common shared hosting uh, solutions and it needs to be running on something very special and I said that uh, okay I need to take out my credit card again and buy this uh, yet another service. So I started thinking hmm okay what it is. It is a WordPress that in demo setup is running on port 8080, but it can be probably very normal WordPress, like exactly like Reich said, that uh, they are running the WordPress from uh, wp.velvet.ee. Uh, uh, so this part is solved. The next two parts, okay, then there is a database part, which is just MySQL, so whatever. Uh, and then there are basically two sites that are uh, run from uh, Node.js, okay server-side Node.js shouldn't be a problem. I've been uh, doing some experiments uh, with that. So, okay, what it takes to put that actually out into production? Uh, basically, I, uh, it takes like that. So, you do log in into your uh, uh, server. You do the usual uh, uh, git clone and the uh, repository. Uh, then uh, mm, you need to either also again install the WordPress there, uh, which I didn't want to do because I think they are because they are kind of including there a bunch of different uh, different uh, uh, plugins from and I need to change the shell script so I basically did just that. So I exported from the Docker the WordPress uh, database that I was just uh, showing to you. So uh, uh, when I go now to the WordPress, I have huh, I have here full WordPress setup and I have a database dump. Very cool. Uh, so I basically did uh, here the tar compress the files. I did spend 15 minutes looking up how to uh, tar compress things without including dot. Uh, dot ds store and the apples dot uh, beginning uh, file names because of uh, obsessive comp compulsive disorder I have. I, I don't have it in other questions except comp uh, compressing zip files where I, everything must be very neat and very well compressed of course. And I went it to, to the server side and uh, unpacked that and, uh, and then the WordPress, uh, well, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Well, basically, um, it's uh, here. It's like that. After you have set the uh, database cred credentials, and uh, we have uh, WordPress uh, uh, running exactly like I had on my local uh, container, and uh, again, also very nicely. Oops, sorry. Uh, running in admin site. Yes, I did change the password. Don't try. <laughs> but anyway, this is the WordPress. You probably uh, have seen that. Uh, there is also uh, oh, and then uh, uh, we have been uh, at zone. We have been uh, uh, allowing uh, server side uh, Node.js. I think from 2016 or 17 or something like that. Uh, for years, there has been very little use for that, mostly for uh, compiling your uh, uh, deployments. Uh, but it is uh, possible. So uh, let's see if I have in the history. Uh, oh, uh, we have something which is called uh, PM2, which is uh, Process Monitor. So uh, as it's visible, there there are currently two processes running. One of them is called. Uh, uh, server and the other one is yarn. I think actually one is should be called the uh, REST API front end, and another one is the GraphQL uh, front end. I I've forgotten to name them uh, properly. And running uh, PM2 uh, should be something like. Uh, like that. So basically, from command line, you just tell that. Uh, 
ah, I looked from this Docker configuration that it should be yarn start. Okay, let's just uh, tell that uh, PM2 start yarn and start. So basically exactly that. Uh, there is also uh, on our backend the possibility to make it start automatically in server reboots, which is absolutely a defini definitive thing to do, but I, I remembered it uh, when I arrived here, so uh, this is currently not working like that. And there is, if you care to look, this is completely live, you can go there, and there is a uh, front end uh, nicely uh, running uh, uh, on uh, uh, REST API, another one is running on uh, GraphQL, and it uh, really, I think, uh, is working pretty snappily. Well, for a text and uh, logo website, it, how, how slow could that actually get? Uh, but anyway, I'm uh, pretty uh, happy. When you come here to the front end pause.eu, uh, why pause? Uh, this is a trademark that was uh, once registered by a uh, good designer friend, uh, Mark Anderson, for uh, whatever reasons. And uh, uh, I have uh, kind of exp expropriated uh, that for my uh, fun testing uh, project purposes. Uh, so here you can find it uh, where uh, to get the code and uh, how to start it. And uh, from the uh, backside, it basically looks like uh, on zone that we have here. Uh, oh, uh, Pose.eu is currently uh, running, uh, uh, everything is running on our common, uh, whatever, 555, uh, 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 the lowest level uh, hosting uh, package. And on the same uh, package also there is a Pose.eu, which is instruction how to set up uh, a web shop in 27 minutes. And I think there is also something like 30 web shops on the same account. So. Uh, don't, don't overburden this uh, pure little server. Uh, I've ha I've have here uh, several uh, subdomains. The headless poser.eu is uh, very nicely just a regular uh, WordPress setup. Uh, perhaps a bit more interesting is uh, how the Node.js is have been done. And uh, they are realized in a way that uh, there is uh, some very little documented and poorly documented feature of using something called mod proxy target port. So, as we told, the Node.js uh, is running on the server side on uh, and serving the content on uh, port 3000 and 3001. And I, here I'm just telling the front end web server, the Apache to target everything that comes asking for uh, frontend.pose.eu to this port 3001 and not care about PHP or anything. It just is uh, sending that on. So, couldn't I actually just put it work, I don't know, on port 3000? Okay, not so cool. And there is one very special feature coming to me from uh, exactly that setup. And that is that uh, Apache is doing something which is called SSL termination. This means that uh, the website is running on HTTPS. HTTPS is served and provided by uh, Apache. Let's encrypt certificates are generated and updated uh, uh, automatically like uh, on uh, all other. Uh, servers and uh, your poor little node application does not need to know anything about HTTPS <laughs> at all. It is just getting into its port 3000 or 3001 exactly the information it uh, needs. If there is anybody having a question that uh, what if there are 10,000, uh, well, let's say not uh, 1,000 other people on the same server and they want to use also port 3000. Uh, how there will be no conflicts, then it's magic. You can, uh, uh, this is uh, one of the, I, I think of, uh, one of the coolest thing I've learned about uh, server internal uh, networking questions, that each of uh, the actual uh, server users has their own loopback address, 127 one point uh, something point something and uh, they have only access to that point. 
and they can use all ports on that uh, that IP, uh, whatever they want. So in your world, you can use port 3000, everybody else can use port 3000, everything is completely happy. And then just uh, on the subdomains, uh, there is also this uh, GraphQL one, which is uh, which is running, as you see, exactly the same configuration, but just uh, directing the traffic to different application on port uh, 3001. And uh, something I have not done currently is I have not uh, used this correct setup of uh, PM2, uh, because the PM2 that I launched from a command line is something that will uh, die off if the physical server is restarted for, uh, I don't know, regular or emergency maintenance. Uh, emergency maintenance usually means that uh, somebody has uh, discovered a uh, new security uh, vul vulnerability in something. Uh, something. Uh, uh, so if you consider uh, configure it uh, via this interface, uh, it will be automatically restarted also when the server gets uh, restarted. Uh, there is now a uh, question. Uh, what about speed? And is there any difference when we are looking at these two applications? And uh, uh, let's see if I have... Uh, uh, I'll do for both also once they uh, reload to be sure they are warm. And I think with Node, there is no question of the application needing to be warm because the application is running. There is a software on the server which is just waiting for the ne next web requests. It is not that, uh, like with a PHP, that, oh, I died off and nobody has been looking for me, so I have purged everything from memory. No, this is node world. So, uh, let's see uh, the front end. HTTPS. Um, mm, mm, uh, What's that like that? Yeah. So here we are going to see the Lighthouse uh, speed report and uh, it comes in at uh, 85, uh, which means that I think it's uh, the site is in uh, whatever top uh, percentile of world uh, websites with uh, first content full paint at 1.1 second, meaning will paint at 1.1. So. Uh, I think uh, I think I actually uh, should try to see if I can make that faster because the website uh, is so compact it should be actually become visible in less than one second. But uh, there are also DNS lookups and things like that, so uh, it's not everything related to that. Uh, we can do also the de uh, test of the other one. Oh, yeah, uh, the desktop one is not interesting at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but thanks for pointing out. Uh, I, I've noticed that uh, usually getting desktop to 100 is so easy that uh, I'm even not bothering looking at there, but uh, thanks for pointing out. And uh, now this is the GraphQL version. Uh, the, I, I think the speed difference will not be due to the REST API GraphQL difference, but mostly to a question of uh, uh, it needs to boot up the JavaScript on the first uh, loading of the page, and uh, that takes uh, time. So, uh, at least this is my uh, current interpretation of that. If anybody knows better about uh, JavaScript running in browser than me, then uh, I'd be very happy to uh, talk about that. What? What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And most browsers are probably also optimized to actually, because when you are looking at what PageSpeed is telling, it is that provide the, the HTML and, uh, uh, in a way that CSS in, is in the head, is uh, fetched uh, as fast as possible, make sure that uh, everything needed for rendering uh, 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 above, the, above the fold, 
the first page content, the CSS is also uh, inside uh, HTML, so it uh, rarely loads uh, very uh, snappily. And uh, yeah, the JavaScript is something which is used, usually told to have it deferred load and have everything work without that. So the current workflow is like that. So if there's a question that should you do server-side rendering for anything except as, uh, SEO, then I think yes. I think for first page loads and uh, if you are doing like the Velvet uh, designing uh, for user experience, then uh, I think the first uh, the, the question is very important to get the pages running. If you're looking at the page speed instruction videos on the Google, they are showing a very nice uh, slide telling that of the people uh, 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 queried, 75% uh, mentioned that uh, most important thing on the website is speed. The question about design was important for 25%. So, being invited here by a great design house, I just, uh, we could probably, t t t the speed is also part of the design. About, like, yeah, and for you, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so actually the it is important to think about design also as a design for the speed because this is very important for user experience. Everything that works uh, in the uh, latency of uh, 100 milliseconds seems instant. When things become uh, longer than one second, you are going to have some kind of uh, jaggedness in your uh, thoughts. So, uh, please uh, try these things and uh, this is a good platform for going in and seeing how the React apps works because the code actually is pretty simple. You can uh, uh, go, uh, go in here, see all of the uh, uh, page builds and everything, try to to start with the smaller things like uh, putting in funny, de funny text and changing the, the colors a bit. The funkiest thing, I, I think, I'm not sure if the PM2 is currently also doing the uh, watch and reloading the application every time I change files, but I actually found that when I did change the SCSS file, the result was immediately refreshed in the browser. Like basically, uh, when you're doing your local development, I've found that I need to have some special tools to refresh that. But I don't know, I was doing just with the FTP program on the server and my, my browser was refreshing. I'm not sure if it's uh, anyhow related to React or, some, or, or, or the PM2 reloading, but it was uh, very cool see, see, to see that uh, basically instantly everything works. Oh, and one more demo here. Uh, where is the... So, uh, uh, there is a question that how does uh, Google see this uh, page? So, I uh, just uh, authorized the pause.eu for uh, Google uh, Webmaster Tour or, or Search Console and uh, did fetch it uh, live and we'll be seeing shortly that uh, the page very nicely is uh, it's going to take a minute or two. It seems to be taking two. Okay. Uh, uh, view tested page. So here's the nice uh, HTML and here is also the screenshot. So definitely for Google Spider it was not a problem to do uh, this kind of rendering. Uh, on a completely unrelated note, I've seen in uh, in my uh, mod security and OWASP CR, uh, CRS uh, web application firewall, uh, recently uh, things which my uh, false positive detector is considering uh, false positives. Why? Because there are requests that are blocked, but there is a JavaScript run. So, which is usually meaning that it's not the hackers, because hackers are usually not running our script. They are just uh, 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 getting the pages and seeing the results. And I'm getting false positives from uh, a very nice looking uh, IPv6 addresses, which spell like uh, F-A-C, 
uh, EB00C, like Facebook, Facebooks. Uh, so uh, there is some kind of a Facebook crawler that is also inspecting your pages, possibly after like or, or for whatever reason, and what is doing uh, rendering the page, including uh, uh, running the JavaScripts on page. So hopefully in some time we can tell that uh, these pages could be very well rendered also by other uh, uh, engines. Uh, yeah, and we, c we could do the same test for, uh, for uh, this, uh, which one I did? I did the GraphQL. Yeah, I did, the, uh, yeah, of course, if you do the a test for the REST API one, which has server-side rendering, then there is no question that you can show the uh, screenshot, but uh, also the one which is uh, completely empty, empty. HTML has generated uh, correct page. And I think that now if we uh, supply it with uh, uh, sitemap XML with uh, uh, endpoints for all of our required pages, I think that uh, it should not be a very big problem for Google to render also that. But do think about the people who are clicking on the link they are finding in Google. They must get it fast and that's why you need server-side rendering. So, any questions? Yeah, Max. Uh, I, I, I think there was one thing was which, which was related to this uh, uh, school. But what was the other part? Did, did I mention, mention something else? The dark side of the rack? My dark side has... Uh, uh -huh. Somebody has told that uh, the voice has gone missing. Is it still missing? What? Uh, no, siis peaks igal ühel ilmselt heli olema, aga... Ei, ma panin, see on, ma panin kinni selle heli tähendab, aga okei, ma oleme anyway juba suhtselt nagu lõpus. The dark side of React is that you need to learn programming. This is the shitty part of that. And uh, the point is that uh, with uh, WordPress, it's pretty easy to write uh, just sequential code. Start in the morning, at the beginning of file, question mark PHP, and just start typing, and type to the lunch, then have a lunch, then come back and type to the evening. And this is completely okay WordPress development in general standards. Uh, you can just Google whatever uh, things you find and copy paste from Stack Exchange and, and so on, and it uh, nobody sees that uh, because it's uh, somewhere on the server side. But uh, when you are thinking about the React, you will be, I think, thinking more in the object world. It uh, means that you need to be uh, thinking a bit more in the abstract terms. Uh, uh, you need to be thinking about things in the asynchronous way. The most difficult uh, experience for me from the last year was uh, learning Node.js. I wrote actually a very cool thing. I, I wrote a uh, web spider, uh, which is able to scan all of Baltic websites, uh, front pages of websites, uh, in very uh, low performance mode in four hours. Uh, so I'm uh, thinking about making it uh, a live check and live status monitoring of, uh, of all Baltic websites. Uh, and uh, uh, the moment you are coding in a way that you have always used to think that when you're telling that uh, there is a function call and there is a return and the program is waiting until the function calls back. And when you are going into the JavaScript world and uh, to the asynchronous part of that, and it turns out that you can tell function to do something and uh, your code will uh, go on, and the function will be just doing somewhere something, and you need to and you need to implement pretty complex uh, 
uh, at least on the first view, pretty complex things uh, to uh, to uh, to take into account that you can, for example, when you're not just building a website but something uh, uh, more application-ish, you can tell that, okay, I need uh, these things done. Like your, I don't know, mom and wife is telling that, uh, it's a weekend, please, uh, I don't know, clean your, help me clean the kitchen and, uh, and bring in the firewood and, uh, and whatever. And uh, basically she goes away. And then you are the JavaScript that is going and fetching and doing things, and uh, she just later comes back and says, "Okay, seems that everything has been done. So, oh, oh, cool. We can now go on, uh, go on with our lives." So, uh, I, I think this part is uh, the most uh, uh, crucial part in moving uh, from PHP to to other forms of coding, of thinking about things in uh, different ways and uh, taking into account that part of the things are happening on the server, part of the things are happening on the browser and how they are exactly connected. Is it just happening somehow or do you actually understand how it's happening? Because if it's going to be broken, then again with linear PHP monolithic applications, it's uh, pretty easy to debug them, not that most people are doing that. Uh, no, but uh, it is uh, technically a pretty doable thing. And uh, uh, yeah, this is uh, kind of by my, uh, my, my, my main problem that uh, with these things for me there is a lot of uh, learning and a lot of uh, becoming much better coder than I have ever been and I'm kind of afraid of uh, that part of me. What if I become programmer? What could go wrong with that? So. So you mentioned that basically to run this thing on the zone server, uh, you need PM2. Uh, no, you can basically just go in and uh, type uh, yarn start and keep your SSH connection open by, I don't know, pre pre pressing the enter key every, uh, every while. Uh, you can also use uh, the thing which is called uh, Tmux, like there is a screen, there is a Tmux, so you can log in to Tmux, uh, launch yarn, uh, and, and it will be running. Uh, but PM2 is just needed. PM2 is like, uh, it's like, I don't know, cron on, ch cron on steroids. Cron is meant for uh, occasionally doing something. PM2 is the guy who's meant for keeping things running all the time. And, 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 and uh, especially from my node projects, I so much love PM2. So I wrote the program that's doing this all Baltic scanning and I needed to go to uh, Drupal camp in uh, in Riga, and I was of course I was late with my code, like I'm always late with everything, and uh, I was uh, running out of time to do the scan. I wa and I was calculating that at that speed it will be taking uh, 20 hours to scan all of these sites. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, that was interesting. <laughs> and uh, uh, and uh, so I just uh, in uh, PM2 told that uh, 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 what it is uh, scale 2 or scale 4 or whatever is a command. So I had one node application running and I told it like scale 5 and I had now 6 applications running in parallel doing uh, all of the work. And I was like, wow, this is how scale. You basically just tell it to scale by number of uh, workers. And it works like that. Wow, that's, that's absolutely cool if you need to do something which is uh, uh, processing. So definitely you need to see that. So. Oof, I think it's uh, currently we, uh, in the we have uh, our uh, legacy platform, which is currently the servers with IP numbers up to 27, something like that, and up from there is our new zonas, us, 
and our, our new Sonos is running uh, always latest uh, long time uh, version, la latest LTE, which is, I think should be uh, 12 mm, at, at the moment, yeah. So it's 12.14 and we are keeping it up. Uh, there is the thing that we have been discussing with Andres Reinman, uh, who has been working for, for us and uh, has written a great uh, email platform for us. Uh, that uh, can we just upgrade Node and uh, his experience with Node is that usually you can just uh, add new Node and it should be, the old code should be working. So. so we are pretty happily upgrading. On old platform we can't because it doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't compile together with older PHP versions that are using, running there. So if anybody is running older PHP than 5.6, please do upgrade. No, yeah, uh, there is, uh, uh, there is uh, and, 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 and if you don't care about applications, please do think about this, uh, the environment. Serving of the cat pictures is uh, twice uh, less energy consuming in newer PHP versions. Oh, we cannot show... Yes, you already have the web page. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, and this one, uh, by the way, it's bad in a way that uh, it ends with 5.6, but it, it goes worse uh, when you go uh, left from here. So this is today's news from Kinstar. They have done the test with PHP 7.4, and it uh, turns out that 7.4 is marginally faster than uh, 7.3. Yeah, but, uh, but the main uh, effect comes from uh, here from getting rid of the MySQL commands and, uh, and, the, and uh, formatting your class, in, uh, class constructs a bit uh, better than uh, uh, before. Any more issues with uh, something? Uh, I, uh, I, I, I think uh, things like, uh, uh, first, uh, uh, our terms of service uh, do not prohibit using Node.js for web serving, which uh, last time I checked our largest competitor had, uh, uh, were telling that it is uh, written clearly that uh, you should not be doing these kinds of things on our servers. Uh, so uh, I'm not even sure if, if they have, but if they have, uh, you, could, you, you shouldn't be uh, using that. And uh, of all uh, the others, uh, uh, I really don't know. And uh, considering that all of them are limiting your performance to one core, basically, there is a new high-performance uh, web hosting provider uh, toting their wares, uh, virtual.com, which has a very nice comparison table uh, where they come out winner. The only thing is that uh, they are counting things like uh, uh, PHP memory allocation as per php.ini. Uh, and uh, unlike uh, the mentioned competitor, uh, in zone you can uh, modify the PHP init to your uh, likeness, including uh, with a global ini uh, for your account and uh, with dot uh, user dot ini. There are some parameters that can't, can't be in dot user dot ini, but this is due to be a PHP architecture that you can't. Uh, so you can uh, change that to, uh, to whatever you want, and we have been thinking about telling that you can have peak, mem peak memory usage up to 164 gigabytes, uh, just to show off because they have just two gigabytes. So. But the main thing is that uh, we are allowing uh, 10 PHP processes on very fast, uh, let's say, golden grade uh, processors. Uh, and 10 PHP processes means that you can basically get uh, 10 cores, not 1.5, which means that when it comes to, a, and, oh, and we are running separate MySQL servers. So, uh, so the, the, the performance question is, uh, is the main uh, thing that uh, differentiates uh, us from uh, uh, all of the rest except webimayots. With the webimayots, the main question is that if you want to uh, do some kind of things, then uh, uh, I love my uh, what what my, my ops has done for uh, SSH access, 
everything from nicely uh, colored uh, outputs to to commands like uh, L, which does the LS minus o AL, so you can list things and PM2s and uh, and all of the code to do everything. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, the moment you want to do something on the server side, you'll probably find out that. Uh, there is a huge difference in this 25 cents that sets us apart in the in the price wise. Ah, and if somebody is interested in the sec in the security side, from uh, uh, December updates we have also Yara. Yara is the engine for uh, doing a very fast uh, uh, pattern searching for finding malware and things. So Yara is built in also in the platform. From the last. Uh, and uh, September updates also, uh, Python has native MySQL support. Why do you need my native MySQL support in, in Python? Who is doing anything in Python on uh, some servers? Well, I went to some capture the flag uh, cybersecurity exercises, and they were all trying to run uh, uh, CTFD, which is the main uh, cyber play uh, scoring uh, system, on some kind of Docker containers in default configuration. They thought that next time they are doing, I'll be offering them uh, CTFD as a service because uh, uh, the hope that everything you take from the uh, internets and put it on the containers like I did for a trial, yes, for playing around, this is very cool, but I wouldn't be putting a production site uh, live with one evening and uh, a couple of beers and pizzas. So.